With the introduction of Tinker's version 3, the smell tree that we love so very much for making all of our awesome cool tools, well, it's changed a little bit. And getting just to this point is a little bit longer than it used to be. But don't worry, because I'm going to guide you through how to set up your very first Tinker smell tree. Now, when it comes to tinkers, one of the big things we're going to be using a lot throughout the whole process is something called seared brick, which are these little ingots here. But getting to them is a little bit tricky. Well, it's actually quite easy. Let me show you how you do it. So to get seared brick, you're first going to need to get yourself some grout. How do you get this? Well, you can't find it in your world. It doesn't actually spawn naturally. You need to craft it, and you craft it using three blocks. Clay, sand, and gravel so make sure you get yourself quite a fair bit of this if you've not got a desert nearby you can just go to the nearest sort of like ocean or river or anything and you can find quite a bit of sand fairly easy just underneath the surface here and the same goes for clay you'll find pockets of this stuff just all around and if you're even lucky you can find some gravel although i prefer to go underground for gravel when i'm doing my mining but yeah it can all be found literally right here at the riverside so when you're crafting up grout, there's two different recipes that you can use depending on your resources. The first one uses clay balls and is just one clay ball, one sand and one gravel in any combination in the crafting grid. That'll get you two. Or you can do the one that I much prefer to do, which is the clay blocks along with four gravel and four sand. That'll get you eight and you can make yourself quite a bit up this way like so you're gonna need a fair more than what i've got right here but i don't need any more in this world because i've already got a smell tree up i'm just showing you guys how to do it so once you've got your grout it's fairly simple the next step is to smelt it down so grab yourself a furnace make sure you got some coal in that furnace just toss the grout in the grout will smelt down each one of these is going to get you one seared brick you're probably going to need about four or five stacks of this stuff so yeah go a bit crazy with your grout it's good to have too much rather than too little as you can always make the smell tree better if you have more resources left over afterwards. Now, back in the old days, you would be able to take them seared bricks and craft the various components here to make the forge. But now it's changed a little bit. While a lot of this is still craftable that you see here, uh, one bit of this, this bit in particular, requires a prerequisite. The Tinker's Construct Forgey Thingy Majig. I'm not sure what it's called, but let me show it you. This is it right here. You need to construct this little machine to be able to progress towards that. But what are all of these parts and how do you craft them? Well, let me show you. Now, the first and most important part is this melter right here. We need to craft that up. And for that, you're going to need yourself some seared bricks like we've already got and some glass. And if we take a look at the recipe here, you can see that it's just five seared bricks with either a fuel gauge or an ingot gauge we want the fuel gauge it's a little bit cheaper and you can just craft that up five glass with some seared brick like so and then we're just going to take the seared brick and we're going to put it around like so in a u shape and then that gives us our seared heater now i'm going to pop this down right here this is the brains of our operation okay this is what we are going to be interacting with but this needs a few things to work the most important thing that this needs to work is if we right click it must be placed above a fuel tank or heater to function so we need a heater i've been using this sealed fuel tank because this is something that i will also use over in the big spell tree so it's much easier to get let me show you so to fuel this thing we're going to need one of these fuel tanks like i said and to craft it is fairly simple it's just a piece of glass right in the center there surrounded by some seared brick and boom so this is going to be our heat source okay and it needs to go underneath what we're fueling. So we are fueling the heat, the smelter right there, look. Or the melter, rather. So we're going to put it underneath. Now, if we look here, we've got an interface. And I'll show you what each of these mean. This is items that we're going to put into it. So if we put items there, that's what we're going to smelt down. If it's got a blue line there, it means it cannot be smelted for some reason. And if you looked on that one closely, it says not enough heat to smelt this item. But we'll look at that in just a minute. This is where what's inside of the smell tree is going to show. So all of our liquefied metals like iron, gold, and various other things. This here, though, is the important one. No fuel found. So why is it finding no fuel when we put this tank below it? Well, if you notice my tank, my tank had something in it. You need to put in 
lava in here. So I'm not going to show you how to get lava. You know how to get lava in your world, I'm sure. But they're just pits all around or you can mine down to bedrock level. You can find lava pretty easily. Just put it in. Now this can hold up to four buckets of lava. And as it smelts things down, it will use that lava. So keep that in mind. Now, the next thing that we're going to work on is how to drain things out of here. Now, what we'll do, first of all, is we'll just toss in some material so you guys can see how this works. We'll toss in a little bit of um, copper because I've got quite a bit of copper. So we'll just throw some copper in there. And as you can see, that's starting to smelt down. The raw copper is smelting down and it's going to produce here. Now, unlike the, the Tinker's smeltery over there, this is not going to ore double. Oh, we've got four ingots out of three. Maybe it's a little bit smarter than I thought it was, but it doesn't fully or double. But now we're going to move on to the next step. So getting resources out of here is fairly simple. And there's two ways to do it, or two common ways anyway. That's using a basin or a table. And I'll show you how to craft up both. Again, you're going to need seared brick. The table is like this. And the basin is literally it upside down in a U shape. And that gives us these two things right here. Now, I'll show you how these work in a moment, but the important thing here is knowing how much resources go into each. Now, this is to create casting bait, or not casting basin, sorry, ingot templates, or any template for any tool you want to craft. But more on that in a minute. We're going to focus just on this basin here. This allows you to pour out the items in here and turn them into a block. Now, it needs to be a block as you can see we've only got four there so i need to smelt up a couple more to get myself enough to be able to fill up nine blocks see we have over it says four ingots i need that to be up to at least nine otherwise the basin isn't going to fully fill up so once your items are smelted down and you've got enough for a block we got enough for one block and three ingots which is pretty cool we're going to want to be able to get this out of here so how do we get it from here and into here well, you use something called a seared faucet. These can be placed on any side of this melter. It can even be placed on this side. And you can have multiple. You can have one this side and one this side. But how do you craft that? It's actually fairly easy. It's literally a V-shape like so. And you get three for just that cheap price. Then all you got to do is right-click the faucet itself. And it is going to slowly drain out and into the basin. And as a little bit of time passes... The liquid will harden and we will get a lovely block of gold. Give me my block of gold. Not my block of gold, sorry, my block of... It doesn't want to give it me. It does not want to give it me. It does not want to give it me. There we go, there we go. A little bit of lag, a little bit of lag there. That's all that was. But there you go, we've got our copper and that is that. So now we're going to take a look at this side here. Now this side is used for making casts. But you can also use it to make ingots. But first you need to make a cast. Now, I'm going to get into casts in a different video where I teach you how to make all of the different tools and weapons within Tinkers. But for this one, I just want to show you how you can make an ingot cast so you can get ingots out of your melter. And it is really, really simple. Now, casts are made always from gold, or at least more reliably from gold. There are various other resources that you can make them from, but gold is your best one. If we look at casts here, you can make clay casts here, or sand casts, should I say, but they're only good for one use and then they'll break. You can also make a oh, rod, a red sand class. Okay, that's, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. You used to be able to make uh, a different one, but uh, it looks like they've they've changed that now. So now, like I said, sand casts, which are going to be pretty naff. We want to go with gold casts so we can reuse them. Now, this is telling us, look, not enough free space for the fluid here. If we look back over here at the gold, which means we need to get rid of this molten copper first, which I was a bit afraid of that it was going to do that. But that's okay. We can just pour it out here. Now, don't worry. This isn't going to go to waste. You can fill this up later on with some more coal, more copper. But we want to worry about this molten gold right here. Let's say you get a little bit more than you did before. Now, if you did want to get rid of this, by the way, you can just simply break this and it will just get rid of the resources that's in there. So if you ever just wanted to do that, you can. Now we're going to make a cast. Now, to make a cast, we have to first have an item to make a cast of. So we want to make an ingot cast. You can use an ingot, but I always like to use a seared brick or a regular brick. That way I'm not use wasting resources. And just right click and it will pour the gold around your cast. And then boom, it destroys whatever you use to make the cast. But this allows us to then right click, 
build up this ingot cast and then get an ingot. Now, if we'd used a sand cast, it would destroy this cast after we'd made it. So they could be used in a pinch, but gold is more reliable. And again, we're not going to have enough to make two ingots, but we can just go ahead and break that and put it back down if we so desire. You can also use tanks if you so wish and various other things to get resources into them. It doesn't just have to be into these two, but we're keeping it strictly to tinkers at the moment. So now that we've learned how to make the metal tree, we're going to move on to the smell tree and how to make the big thing you can see just over there in the distance. Now, to start with, you're going to need seared brick and you're going to need to choose a size. Now, typically, this is built on an odd number, and the most common one is a three interior. You can make this as small as a one interior, but you can make it even bigger if you want. Mine over there is a five interior, and what we're going to want for this is some seared brick blocks, which are made simply by doing that, just filling the crafting grid two by two with seared bricks, and then just fill in the inside, and this is going to form the bottom of your smeltery or the inside of it. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to build up a wall around each side of it using just seared brick for now. Now, we're not going to keep all seared brick here. This is just going to be temporary, but I am showing you guys what this is going to do. Now, the inside of your smeltery is going to show you how many different things you can smelt at once. So, because we've got nine blocks of space, that's nine items that we can put in here to smelt at once. Obviously, if you make this bigger, you can smelt more, but there are another way that you can make it bigger. You don't just have to make it bigger width-wise. You can actually just build up the height of it one more, ensuring that every block around it is filled with a Tinker's Construct component. In this case, we're just going to use seared brick. And now we've got 18 blocks worth of space in there. And the height that this can go up to is world height. This can go up as far as you like. I've not run into a limit. But now we're going to look at how we can make turn this stone monstrosity into an actual smelter. So just like the melter... We need some form of controller and the controller is a little bit more convoluted to craft than the previous one. Let me show you. If we look at here, you can see this is the smeltery controller. This is why we needed the little small melter first because this requires us to take a seared brick and pour copper over it. Four ingots of copper to be precise. So if we go over to our melter right here, we're going to stick four ingots in or we can only stick three in at the minute. And then, well, we'll just pretend that there's four in there for the sake of this tutorial. And then we're just going to right click a block of seared brick into there like so. Now with floor, four blocks of copper, we're just going to right click the, so, the little thingy magic faucet. And that's going to go over the seared brick and turn it into our controller. This is the brains of our outfit. And how do we set this up? Well, just pick out a block. I'm going to pick this bottom one out here and pop it down. Boom. There's the smelter, but that's just the brains of it. We need to look at a couple more things. One, fuel, and two, how to get items out of here. Now, fuel I'm going to do right here because it's fairly simple. All it requires is this tank. So you can pick this tank up or make another one of these and just go ahead and knock any one of these blocks out on the bottom row here. Oh, you just had to pop inside, didn't you? Now, what I like to do when I'm doing this, you don't have to do this, is I always like to put a seared brick block below the tank that way if it drains out completely it's still got like the black aesthetics below it rather than just being whatever block you're building on but you absolutely don't need that block there you just need the tank there and that's going to solve our issue of having fuel in here now we need to look at getting items out of here now doing this requires us to craft up this seared drain which is seared bricks and some copper ingots which i've got both so we'll just put a seared brick in each corner and a copper there. Now you can have multiple of these per tank or per forge, if you will. You can have as many as you like. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to replace any one of these blocks. Now this can be a top block and I prefer to have it as a top block. Now I much prefer two of these, but we can use one to get the same purpose here. And this is why I don't put in corners. You can totally put in corners if you like. It's not going to change anything. You just absolutely don't need them. And I don't put them in for this reason I'm about to show here which is getting fluids out. Now, we obviously need somewhere to put them. And again, we can make use of our basin and our casting table. Grab your faucets too. Might as well, we need them. And these just go down next to this. Well, not next to it, but next to it and underneath it. So one block over, one block down. Like so, so it's either side. And this is why I like to have my drain here and no corner blocks. It allows me to use both sides of this drain. Now, all you gotta do 
is pop your seared drains on there or your seared faucets. And that's it. You're ready to pour things out. We've got my ingot cast. I've got my ingot cast. We just need something to smelt down. So I've got some ingots or some iron or whatever's over here. I know we've got to have something. That's the wrong chest. Uh, let's grab some copper. Let's just grab some copper. And because we'll need it, we'll grab some more lava. And it's just very, very simple. Fuel the lava. Now you can set up a system to automate this lava. That's not a problem. If you've got like a drum of lava or something, it accepts pipes from all different mods, which is really, really good. We're going to throw these in. We threw in nine. We threw in 18 in here. So we'll get four blocks of copper out because it all doubles. Or it will double it. Okay. You will get double back. And again, we can use the ingot cast or we can use the basin. Now you can set up multiple of these drains. You can have every single one of these a drain if you like. And have every single one of these casting tables around the outside. That's perfectly okay as well. I have a couple over here. If we take a look at my actual smell tree for this world. Over here, you can see that I've got one set up on this side. Or two set up on this side, sorry. And two set up on this side. And we're smelting down a little bit of molten gold at the minute. Back at this smell tree, we've got molten copper. All ready to go. Look at that. Two blocks to six ingots. So it looks like it did a little bit more than all doubled. Or maybe it didn't quite all double. It should have all doubled. It did. It did. I think it did. I think it did. Oh, questions. Raising questions. <laughs> no, it didn't. It didn't. Because of 980. Maybe, maybe copper doesn't all double because of how common it is now. But most ores do all double. But you can see we got a little bit more out there than we should have got out of there. Which is fantastic. And that is pretty much everything to do with the smeltery. Again, you can take this up as high as you want to be able to spell more inside of it. Each block of space in here is going to unlock an additional block right here. You'll get eventually a little scroll wheel that you can go up and down them to scroll. And you can you can smell insane amounts very, very quickly in this thing. So that's going to do it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to look at weapons and the different materials that you can use to craft them and forge them using the Tinker's Construct. But if you don't want to wait for that tutorial to come out, and you actually just want to see my LP of this series. It's all the mods, tribal states. You'll see new episodes regularly on my channel. So feel free to subscribe and check them out. But as always, I'm Casey. You're the awesome folk. I want to thank you so much for watching. You guys take care now, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye. That is your chance to be rude. Hey, kid. Don't ever let them get inside your head. They'll tell you what to do in life instead. Everything you know that you could get Don't let them guide your life towards regret I'll fight for what I love with every breath My past is filled with things I won't forget I use them all to push me to my best